What's up athletes? Today you're gonna learn five tips that will get you to start feeling that effortless with life power on your forehand. Let's go. Tip number one is to get into your unit turn. This is the position where your arms, your racket, your shoulders, as well as the lower body all turn sideways as one unit, hence the name. But it isn't just about turning uh, and standing straight up. It's supposed to be a position where you're agile, you're relaxed, and you're ready to be able to time your swing properly. Now what you'll see in all the top pros is that as they execute their unit turn, their hitting arm as well as their off arm both remain on the racket and they're spaced away from their bodies. Now if you turn that foot while keeping both of your hands on the racket, you'll find that your trunk as well as your hips naturally follow suit, turning to the side about 45 degrees to the net. And this position allows you to move forward, backward, or laterally as quickly as possible. Now, in contrast, most players will move with their chest facing forward because as you're tracking the ball, you want to be able to move with your chest to the target. When you release your hands off of the racket, it leads to instability as well as a lack of control in that hitting arm. So keep both hands on the racket and you'll be prepared to be able to execute that smooth backswing motion. Now this initial unit turn position is critical because it allows you to then fully rotate your body as we continue throughout the swing, as we'll cover very soon. And the exact timing of this releasing of your hand is gonna depend on the exact shot that you're dealing with. So if the ball is faster or you're closer to the net or to the ball, then you can flow straight from your unit turn into your backswing in one fluid motion. Or if you have a little more time, let's say the ball is floating or you're a little further back from the baseline, then you can move in that unit turn position, keeping your hitting arm relaxed as you move to the ball. And then once you're ready, you can load, execute that backswing, and then bam, explode into the ball. Now timing in general in tennis can be one of the most difficult parts of the game because it's just so nuanced. So we're gonna be making an entire video dedicated to how to time your strokes in tennis. But first, let me know in the comments below, what questions do you have about timing in tennis? Now, as the ball approaches, elite players are gonna initiate the backswing as well as their full body load with the off arm. And that takes us to the next tip. What you'll see on most of the top forehands in the world is that the off arm is gonna stretch across the body until it's about parallel to the baseline. And at this point, in contrast, most club and junior players are gonna have the off arm out in front of their body or dangling somewhere down to the, to the side of their body. And as a result, they're not able to rotate the hip and the trunk away from the net as much, getting that full core engagement. And they're typically gonna have a larger backswing as well, which leads to using more arm instead of the bigger, stronger muscles in the body. So looking back at these top ATP and now increasingly the top WTA players, their hitting arm movement in the backswing is actually pretty minimal. Their hitting arm is gonna rise away from the body, but for the most part, what takes the racket back is actually gonna be the hip and trunk rotation away from the net. And you could try this out the, the next time you're on court or just imagine this, this uh, screen is the net and you have your racket right in front of you. And if you stretch your off arm across until you're sideways on to the, the screen, then you'll notice that the racket is actually already pretty much where it needs to be in order to accelerate back forward. So to load your body fully, as well as to execute that backswing motion, a big part of this equation is gonna be getting that full off arm stretch until it's about parallel to the baseline. And a good indicator is, can you get your off arm all the way across until that off arm shoulder is like right underneath your chin? And when you get that full off arm extension, you should feel a nice stretch within your core in your oblique muscles. And another note is that this off arm stretch is actually gonna help you to gauge the distance of the ball as it's coming toward you, and you're gonna be able to better time your stroke. And we're gonna break that down more in a future video. And when you combine this off arm stretching technique with tip number three, that's when you really start stacking on the power. If you wanted to stretch and shoot a rubber band, what would be the first thing you do? 
typically you would stabilize the arm that is holding the rubber band so that you can anchor everything into place and then you can release it. And on the forehand, that anchor is gonna be your legs. As you anchor the legs against the ground, then you're able to stretch the off arm across and really feel that full hip and core engagement. So unless they're out of position, the top players are typically gonna stretch the off arm across and plant that back leg simultaneously as the ball is coming. And this engages the prime muscle movers of your forehand, your calves, your quads, and your hips, which allows you to generate tons of more power. And according to Dr. Cyril Genevois, the leg drive and the trunk rotation are actually the greatest contributors of power on the forehand. So if you have enough time to gather your balance, then ideally you're gonna load most of your weight onto that back leg as you stretch the off arm across your body. And getting the back leg loaded is powerful because it's connected to the hitting hip as well as the hitting trunk and the hitting arm. So when you drive the back leg through the ground, it propels the rest of your body to then sling forward for that whip-like power into contact. So as you move in whatever direction through cross steps or through side steps, and we'll cover a future video on exactly how to move to the ball, but as you move and you load, I want you to focus on loading onto the balls of your back foot because specifically when you're planted on the balls of the back foot, you're able to engage those calf muscles and then pushing through that plantar flexion motion of the ankles, just think push, push through your feet. That's really what allows you to engage your full kinetic chain from the ground all the way up to your wrist and your racket at contact. And lastly, planting this back leg allows you to really load the rear glute and hip while also locking the hip into place. You're not able to rotate your hip as you plant the back leg. And as a result, as you stretch the off arm sideways, you're gonna get a better hip and shoulder separation, which is gonna further put a stretch on the core muscles, allowing you to generate more effortless power. And when you get this really deep load, you'll probably notice that you don't wanna stay in this position for very long and there's a lot of potential energy stored here. You'll feel a tension in your rear glute, your quads, your obliques, and all of that is gonna want to unload. And at that point, you're ready for tip number four. Now, if you've watched enough tennis videos, you've probably heard all types of stuff about how to generate power on the forehand, whether it's transferring your weight forward or hitting through the ball or snapping your wrist forward or jumping. Okay, hopefully you got that reference. <laughs> but in a real match situation, a lot of the best players are able to hit their forehands powerfully while moving sideways, backwards, or diagonally everywhere in between. And in fact, many of the hardest forehands hit in history have been hit on the run, standing straight up, or by jumping. Now, as a side note, the jumping forehand is actually pretty unique because you're not swinging forward as you launch off the ground, which means that your leg drive isn't really helping to rotate your body forward. And its power relies on exaggerating other mechanics within the forehand that we'll talk about in a future video. And by the way, Day Day's just been absolutely annoying me with this jumping forehand. So let me know in the comments below if you wanna know how he's doing it. <laughs> now, all of this is to say that there are multiple ways to generate power on the forehand. Transferring your weight forward could help to add a few miles per hour, but of course, you have to be moving sideways or backwards, so you can't always be doing that. In order to experiment with all of these different methods and to really be, become creative on the court, we need a solid base to build off of. We need a foundation. And that foundational power source that I recommend for you to focus on is gonna be the back hip rotating forward into contact. If you simply relax your hitting arm and you focus on rotating your back hip forward and letting everything follow as a result of the rotational force, you'll actually find that you already have a lot of power that you're generating. Just like that. My arm is relaxed and my hip is rotating and as a result, everything is just slinging forward. Now, in order to control the swing, I don't recommend that you just focus on leading the hip forward because that leads to some other problems that we'll cover next. 
But one of the puzzle pieces within the forehand that I recommend you start focusing on is really the role of the back leg and the back hip. And as you stretch your off arm sideways and load your back leg, you'll feel this load on your core as well as your hips. And to unload that, I want you to focus on pushing your back leg and really allowing the back hip to rotate forward to initiate your entire swing. Now, here's a great drill that's gonna allow you to start really engaging the back leg on your forehand. I want you to simply start on your back leg. So this is gonna be your right leg if you're a righty. And just be on the balls of your feet. You should be able to bounce in place just really lightly and feel your calves, your quads, as well as your glutes really engaging there. Get into your backswing position. I want you to drop the ball and simply hit from this position. So you're gonna be here after you hit, you can step onto the front leg. So you're bouncing, hit, and go onto the front leg. And after you get comfortable with that, you can either uh, just uh, use a ball machine, you can do it against the wall, or you can do it against a human ball machine. And <laughs> you can be on your back foot, and you're actually gonna rally from this back foot position. So I don't want you to go onto the front leg, actually. You're gonna be here on the back leg, boom, staying on the back leg like that. Boom. Now it's gonna require a little bit of balance, but what you're gonna feel is that you're really forced to, well, you're forced to use your back leg. And then when you're ready, get on both feet. And what you'll notice is that it's way easier for you to really feel the back leg engaging into your shot. So you're here loading, unloading. Boom, boom. Yay, let's go. And finally, none of that force you've generated on your forehand is truly gonna create that heavy power until you're able to transfer that force into the racket head at the moment of contact. And that's why getting that really fluid and whip-like arm action is all in the swing mechanics. Now, I can't cover everything about the forehand swing technique in this video, but one of the most powerful things that you can implement right away is actually a psychological change in your swing. You see, most players think about the forehand swing as a pushing motion, where the hand is behind the racket, and therefore you're pushing the racket forward with your hand through contact. And by definition, this means that you're exerting a force behind the object. And that gives you a greater sense of control over the shot, but it also leads to tightness. But in contrast, if you look at all of the highest level forehands in the world, you'll see that their racket head is lagging well behind their arm at the start of their acceleration. Their racket is being pulled forward at the start of their acceleration. And if you look into Dr. Brian Gordon's studies on the transition point, it's actually being pulled through contact as well. And that's how the wrist is able to release forward in that nice fluid manner at contact. As the hitting hand is pulled forward initially, the racket head is able to lag back, creating the ATP flip if you have the ATP backswing position. But in any case, if you continue pulling your hand forward, it begins arcing toward the center of your body if you're a righty, this means that your hand will begin to curve toward the left side of your body. And this begins exerting a force on the racket where it begins releasing the racket forward. And so by pulling your hand forward and then across your body, you're actually able to get the racket to release forward through the ball naturally. So again, that's just the scientific way of saying, instead of thinking about pushing your, your forehand, I want you to think about lagging your racket behind, keeping your arm relaxed, and then simply pulling your arm forward and to the left all the way through contact. So the next time you're on court, I want you to try this out. Simply start in your slot position where your racket tip is pointing back, your butt cap is pointing forward, your racket is roughly on edge or slightly closed depending on your grip, and your hitting elbow is positioned away from your body. This is another key mistake is if you tuck your elbow in too close to the body, it ends up creating unnecessary tightness. So get that nice spacing, relax your arms, and then from here, I want you to simply focus on pulling your hand forward while you rotate your hips. So pull the hand forward, keep it relaxed, and then rotate from your hips. And you should feel that you get a lot heavier of a ball and a lot more power. 
All right, athletes, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please smash that like button because it really helps us to grow the channel more than you can imagine. And if you haven't already, be sure to watch our entire playlist on the modern forehand technique, which I'll link in the description below. So go click that right after this video. And as always, athletes, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. And until next time, go out and train hard. I'll see you in the next video.